So many traditional oncologists will dismiss the importance of nutrition during cancer treatment, but this belief is totally oblivious to science as discussed in our many other videos. In this video, we get specific about what may be the most beneficial foods during cancer treatment. As always, these ideas are discussed in more depth in the book, Cancer Self-Defense 101. Quick Tips to Help You Survive All citations for studies quoted in this video can be found in the book's bibliography at cancerselfdefense101.com. This video is intended as information, not medical advice. It is not intended to treat, diagnose, or cure any disease. Any medical advice should come from an appropriately credentialed medical professional familiar with your unique circumstances. There are some specific foods that stand out for their particularly potent cancer-fighting potential. The most notable are members of the brassica family, particularly Brussels sprouts, broccoli, broccoli sprouts, cauliflower, and cabbage. Reports of the association of brassica consumption with decreased cancer incidence go back over several decades. Brassica vegetables have high amounts of indole-3-carbonyl, dindolomethane, glucoraphanin, and sulforaphane, all compounds that have been investigated for their powerful anti-cancer effects. Glucoraphanin and sulforaphane supplementation was found to increase six-month survival in a 40-person human pancreatic cancer study by 41%. In a placebo-controlled human trial, I3C supplementation led to a complete regression of precancerous cervical lesions in 8 of 17 women. No woman in the 10-person control group had a complete regression. I3C also helps the liver and has been found to increase excretion of carcinogens in a human trial. See the Dietary Supplements chapter for more information on these extracts. Generally speaking, cooking these brassica vegetables Steaming, sautéing, or baking is preferable to eating them raw, although eating them raw also has its benefits. Boiling is not recommended. At least five servings of brassicas per week are recommended for cancer patients. Mushrooms. Even the simple white cap mushroom can have medicinal benefits. A wide variety of mushrooms have shown anti-cancer benefits. Mushrooms have been used to treat infections for hundreds of years in China. They have passed clinical trials and have been part of the standard of care in China and Japan for cancer for over 30 years. A study of more than 19,500 cancer patients found that the consumption of 18 grams of mushrooms daily was associated with a significantly lower risk of cancer incidence. Mushrooms have a variety of ways they act on the body. Importantly, they upregulate the key immune modulating molecules interferon and interleukin 2. They have also been found to increase T cell numbers in humans and induce dendritic cell, key immune cells, maturity. The mushrooms that are most associated with anti cancer effects are reishi mushroom, turkey tail mushroom, lion's mane mushroom, shiitake mushroom, maitake mushroom. It is possible to obtain reishi, shiitake, and maitake mushrooms from many, especially high-end grocery stores. Even regular white button portabella, crimini mushrooms, and oyster mushrooms have been found to suppress cancer growth in cell lines, with oyster mushrooms being the most potent. The most common and affordable of all mushrooms, the white button mushroom, was found in powdered form to reduce PSA levels in prostate cancer patients. It is best if mushrooms are sautéed, grilled, or even fermented. Raw mushrooms can be hard to digest and even contain trace amounts of toxins. Some mushrooms come in powder form, so they can be easily added to teas or other recipes. Tea is one of the most ancient beverages in the world. Four types of tea are particularly helpful in the fight against cancer. Green tea, graviola tea, chaga mushroom tea, and ginger tea. Green tea is the most popular beverage in China and Japan. Combined, these two countries account for nearly two-thirds of the world's green tea consumption, and both China and Japan have been aware of green tea's medicinal qualities for centuries. 
One review found green tea consumption demonstrated effective prevention or growth inhibition of a wide variety of cancers in 133 out of 147 published studies. A 16-year-long study tracking 164,000 Chinese men found regular green tea consumption to be linked with an 8 to 21% reduction in the risk of dying from any cancer. Another study found green tea consumption to be associated with a 60% decrease in esophageal cancer rates in non-smokers. In a controlled trial, 60 men who had high-grade prostate intraepithelial neoplasia, which has a 30% chance of becoming prostate cancer, were broken into a green tea group and a placebo group. At the end of one year, only one tumor was diagnosed among the 30-person green tea group, a 3% incidence, while nine tumors were diagnosed in the 30-person placebo group, a 30% incidence. Green tea has many active compounds in it, including epigallocatechin 3-gallate, EGCG, epigallocatechin, EGC, caffeine, and theanine. These work synergistically together. It is possible to get green tea in an extract, but extracts typically just have one or maybe two of the compounds. The heat of the tea also increases absorption of the constituent compounds. Additionally, there have been more than 30 reports of liver toxicity due to consumption of green tea extract supplements. There have not been reports of liver toxicity due to consumption of green tea. Green tea works against cancer in numerous ways, including priming cancer cells for apoptosis, self-destruction, by inhibiting cancer cell adhesion, and as an inhibitor of vascular endothelial growth factor, VEEGF, a signaling protein that is essential in the creation of blood vessels that feed the tumor. According to a study of 120,000 middle-aged Dutch men, the optimum intake of green tea seems to be about three cups per day for health. Note, green tea can interact with the multiple myeloma medication, ortezomib and statins. As with anything you will be consuming, it is best to go to drugs.com and check their interactions database as well as conferring with your medical professional. Graviola fruit, aka soursop and guanabana, is indigenous to the hottest tropical areas of North and South America. Graviola juice can be found in the majority of Mexican supermarkets and the fruit itself is in a hefty percentage of Mexican supermarkets as well, even though it is virtually unknown in America. The graviola tree has been exported to tropical Africa and India, where the local populations use it medicinally. The list of medicinal uses of the tree and its parts is lengthy. In traditional medicine, the fruit is used for treating arthritic pain, malaria, parasites, and to raise breast milk production. The crushed seeds are used against worms and parasites. Even the roots and bark are used for their anti-inflammatory and hypertensive properties. Of course, the leaves are used against cancer. Graviola leaf extract has been found to be effective in over 20 lines of human cancer, including multi-drug resistant lines. In a human placebo-controlled trial, people who ingested a graviola leaf extract were found to have blood that was more cytotoxic to cancer cells. Although the clinical data for graviola is modest, the case reports are encouraging. One woman with metastatic ovarian cancer was having a recurrence and became resistant to her chemotherapy. When she began taking graviola tablets, her K125 levels, a key biomarker in ovarian cancer, began lowering and she remains in stable disease with a much lower tumor burden years after initiation. Cancer relapses were strongly associated with discontinuation of the patient's graviola tablets. In another case study, a woman with stage 4 breast cancer developed metastases to her lung and liver. Between 1998 and 2007, she received and became refractory to 10 lines of medication. In September of 2007, she added graviola tea into her regimen. 10 to 12 leaves a day, 
boiled for five to seven minutes in eight ounces of water daily. At the time of initiation of Graviola T in September 2007, her CEA, an important breast cancer marker, was 12.5 nanograms per milliliter. In April 2008, it had lowered to 5.9 nanograms per milliliter. In December 2011, she voluntarily discontinued her graviola tea. In March 2012, her CEA was 4.3 nanograms per milliliter, and her liver enzymes had risen out of the normal range to AST 75 units per liter and ALT 84 units per liter. Liver enzymes that high are almost high enough to normally take most people off of their medication. After receiving her worsening blood tests, the woman reinitiated graviola T, and in November 2012, her CEA was 2.9 units per liter, her AST was 43 units per liter, and her ALT was 50 units per liter. Graviola juices, leaves, capsules, and liquid extract can be found online. The fruit is very rare to find in the United States. The preferred methods of graviola consumption are making a tea of the leaves, ground leaf powder in capsules, or a graviola liquid extract to be added into teas and or other drinks. The woman in the case study just cited consumed eight ounces of tea per day. The leaves should be cut or ripped into small pieces and the stems should be included. Chaga Chaga mushroom doesn't look like a regular mushroom. It is a parasitic fungus that grows on birch trees in cold climates like Siberia, Russia, and the northeastern part of North America. It has been cited in Russian medical texts for the treatment of cancer since at least the 16th century. Chaga first entered the consciousness of the non-Russian world through the 1968 semi-autobiographical novel The Cancer Ward by Alexander Solzhenitsyn, winner of the Nobel Prize in Literature. After the main character, Oleg, develops cancer, he is assigned to a clinic to receive high-dose radiation. He tells his fellow patients that he wishes he could have been given a more simple peasant's cure. He could not imagine any greater joy than to go away into the woods for months on end, to break off this chaga, crumble it, boil it up on a campfire, drink it, and get well like an animal. Despite the fact that there are literally hundreds of case reports in Russian literature going back hundreds of years of cancer being successfully treated with chaga tea, and there are experiments showing chaga kills over 20 human cancer cell lines, there are no human studies in Western medical literature and only a small handful of animal trials. One study in mice showed that tumors in mice who consumed a water-based chaga extract had tumors that were 60% smaller than the control group with 25% fewer metastases. Another mouse study found that a water-based extract of chaga mushroom reduced blood markers of pancreatitis by 40%. Chaga works on the body in a variety of ways. It is immunomodulatory and anti-inflammatory. It increases the maturation of dendritic cells, cells that activate T cells. It reduces insulin resistance. One mouse study said a water-based chaga extract had a dose-effect relationship within a certain range. 250 milligrams per kilogram had obvious anti-diabetes effect and the effect of 500 milligrams per kilogram dose was the same as that of metformin. The same study also showed improvements in markers of liver health. Much like with graviola, scientists are still uncovering its mysteries. Although there are no human studies, we feel like it is worthwhile to consider adding chaga tea to the diet of the average cancer patient due to its encouraging preclinical studies and long history of use in folk medicine. Ginger has a medicinal history going back over 5,000 years. It originated in China and became one of the first spices to gain worldwide circulation. Many Greeks used to consume ginger after a meal to aid digestion. Thousands of years later, ginger is still known as a powerful digestive and stomach aid. Ginger tea reduced
to a statistically significant degree, symptoms of vomiting and stomach discomfort in gynecological cancer patients undergoing chemotherapy. In a double-blind, placebo-controlled human trial, ground ginger in a capsule also was found to reduce nausea and vomiting in patients receiving chemotherapy. This study involved 576 people who were battling a wide variety of cancers. Ginger has also been found to exert anti-cancer activity in dozens of cell lines. In pancreatic cancer mouse model, ginger was found to suppress cancer cell cycle progression, inhibit mTOR, increase reactive oxygen species, and significantly extend survival without serious side effects. In a randomized controlled trial, ginger extract supplementation decreased proliferation and increased apoptosis in the colon tissue of patients with a high risk of colorectal cancer. It also increased the expression of the Bax gene, a gene that helps send cancer cells into apoptosis, suicide. Ginger is in the same family as turmeric. Their rhizomes, the roots, actually look quite similar and the two foods pair well together. Ginger tea is simple to make. All you have to do is dice about 30 grams of the root into small cubes, maybe five millimeters long, and let them seep in boiling water until the tea is cool enough to drink. Ginger can be found at many, if not most, grocery stores. Spices up a row from left to right, cinnamon, star aniseed, ginger, mace, center, fennel seeds, green cardamom, lower row, coriander, aniseed, cloves, allspice, nutmeg. There are a variety of spices that have been shown to have anti-cancer properties. Some of the most promising are turmeric, black pepper, chili pepper, ginger, garlic, saffron, black cumin, cinnamon, allspice, which is not a mixture of spices but a dried, unripe berry, oregano, parsley, corridana, holy basil, and more. Although no randomized controlled human trials have examined the effect of these spices against cancer, their preclinical data is encouraging. Chili pepper, however, has been associated with increased stomach cancer risk, although not other types of cancer. The spice most controversial in regard to its relationship with cancer is salt. Pooled analyses have associated higher salt intake with increased cancer incidence, but these analyses have not distinguished between salt intake and type of food being consumed, such as preserved meats. One review described salt as a double-edged sword in cancer treatment. It may be associated with worsened prognosis in the early stages of the disease and improved outcomes in later stages. Animal trials have examined the effect of salt itself, separate from other foods, on cancer. In advanced cancers in animals, salt is actually associated with improved outcomes, as there are no randomized controlled trials examining the effects of salt intake on cancer outcomes, it seems the existing evidence is at least neutral on its light usage during cancer treatment. Cookware iron has been linked to cancer progression and cast iron skillets can transfer iron into your food. Steel cookware such as fiberware should not transfer anything harmful into your food. Other foods. Unfortunately, the overwhelming majority of foods are, at best, dubious during cancer treatment. We are all unwitting conscripts in the war against cancer, and any war demands steadfast self-discipline. Although it is tempting to think we can munch on fruits until cancer goes away, the foundation of any sound anti-cancer diet are the foods profiled in these videos, ideally put into the framework of a calorie-restricted 4 to 1 ketogenic diet. A vegetarian diet relying heavily on the foods profiled in this chapter would be far preferable to the standard Western diet, but not to the same extent as a 4 to 1 keto diet. For more information on exogenous ketones during cancer treatment, see the book Cancer Self-Defense. 101. Quick Tips to Help You Survive